Bruce Beach of Hornings Mill, Ontario, is convinced a nuclear attack is coming. And for that reason, he spent half his life building his own nuclear bunker, Arc 2. Take a look. Welcome to Arc 2, Canada's largest privately owned nuclear shelter. And this is Bruce Beach, the person who began building it almost 40 years ago. I actually started building shelters before 1980. The first buses, this is built out of 42 school buses. And the first buses were put in in 1980. Tow truck drivers knew that I'd take buses and they'd call me up and they'd say to you, would you like another bus? And I'd say, oh sure. And uh, they would take it to a, a junkyard first and they'd take out all the windows and the seats and I'd give them $300. The purpose of a nuclear shelter is that there is a nuclear war and there's radiation, then this protects the inhabitants from the radiation. The shelter can hold 500 people, and so far the only ones who've secured themselves a spot are the volunteers who helped with the shelter's daily upkeep. Most people don't think I'll ever uh, need the shelter, that there isn't going to uh, be any event. There, there's a difference of opinion about that, but it's looking more and more like it's going to happen. It's not every day Bruce lets outsiders have a tour of the shelter, but he decided to give us a special look inside. At the top and the bottom of every entrance, we and we have seven of them, there's always a steel grill like this, if you noticed it came through, and a steel door. People coming into the shelter park their small weapons, handguns such as that, so we don't carry them into the shelter. These are storage rooms, and there's seven of these. These are rollers that we use to roll things at the end of the conveyors. I've got stuff stuck on there to bring it uh, on down into the shelter. And right now, Bruce has half a ton of food down here. My grandson was down here, he's in about 20, and he was down here uh, looking at this, and I said, here's a jar of pickles. When was that jar of pickles made? 87. 87. I said, okay, and they're still good, believe me. This is our soup pot, and to make the soup that we can feed 3,000 people a day, at least soup and a biscuit. They just put this in last week. This is our little pizza oven, and they're just uh, hooking up this propane stove. We had electric. Bruce says the shelter still needs a few more supplies before it's fully ready, but the one resource he never has to worry about is water. During the day, we keep processing water, and we keep filling the tanker, and so that we always have this tank here, this stainless steel, another stainless steel tank. And perhaps, if it's not in the winter time, the big storage tank up on top. And the well, we blasted this well down through solid rock, 53 feet, six inches, down to the water. Local fire authorities have tried to shut down the shelter numerous times, citing safety concerns, but Bruce refuses to listen, adamant the bunker is structurally sound. The shelter is probably one of the best and best designed in, in North America. You can see the curvature of the bus. See, that's the bus roof, the bars in the bus, okay? And then above that, there's two feet of concrete above the, all the buses. We have all the necessary uh, rooms. Uh, there's washrooms for men and women. So we have everything for children, a nursery and a playroom and bunk rooms for children and so on and so forth. There's one requirement though, children must sleep separately from their parents, no exceptions. If they refuse, they'll be asked to leave. Well, the thing that people have about a misconception is that we're worried about survival. And that's not what Arc 2 is about. It's about reconstruction of society afterwards. And if Bruce doesn't live to see the nuclear attack he's so sure is coming, he hopes his dedicated volunteers will continue on his work after he's gone.